My name is Dr. Sarah Harvey. I'm a dermatologist at Alamere Health, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about skin cancer, how to identify it, and ideally how to prevent it. We'll be talking about a couple different skin cancer types, melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancers. Melanoma, fortunately, are less common. About 100,000 Americans will be diagnosed with that this year. And non-melanoma skin cancers, which include basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, which are much more common and caused by sun damage, and about 5.4 billion will be diagnosed in the United States this year. Melanoma is a life-threatening skin cancer, but fortunately, if we find it early, we can treat it with surgical excision, and it has a very high cure rate. We also have much better medications to treat melanomas now than we did in the past. We like to talk about melanomas in terms of how to identify it, and we use the ABCDEs of melanoma criteria. So A is asymmetry, where ideally all of your moles will be symmetric, so if you cut them in half, they look the same on both sides. B is border, they should have a nice crisp border. Melanomas grow kind of one cell at a time, so they have a little bit of a hazy edge. C is color, your moles should be just one color, whereas melanomas tend to be multiple different colors, like pink and brown or gray and black. D is diameter, bigger than a pencil eraser, so ideally your moles are fairly small, um, but some of your moles can be larger and that's not always a bad thing. And then E is evolution, so anything that's growing or changing should draw your attention and you should pay, uh, pay attention to that and have your doctor look at it as well. In terms of the non-melanoma skin cancers, these are caused primarily by sun damage um, and basal cell carcinoma is the most common. Half of all Caucasians will have at least one of these in their lifetime, um, and many of us will have more. Fortunately, they're not very high risk, and they tend to just grow very slowly where they are and not threaten our life or our health. But if we don't treat them, they do continue to grow and can become symptomatic and more bothersome down the road. Squamous cell carcinoma is also caused by sun damage and is a little bit more aggressive than basal cell carcinoma um, and can spread more into the local tissue. Um, but fortunately, we can usually treat that with just surgical excision as well. The risk factors for non-melanoma skin cancers include predominantly UV radiation, so light from the sun or from tanning beds. Those reach the earth in both UVA and UVB rays. UVB rays um, cause tanning and wrinkling and a lot of sun damage and, and are the biggest culprits in skin cancer formation. UVA rays come through the skin and through the ozone all year round and um, can accumulate and cause quite a bit of damage as well. UVA rays tend to have more penetration and can travel through thin layers of clothes, through windows, and into your skin. UVB rays, which are the primary cause of sunburn, don't have the penetration and can't go through thin clothes or even windows. The key component to preventing skin cancer is preventing these rays from penetrating the skin and causing damage to the skin cells. What happens is this UV radiation goes into the cell and damages the DNA. That causes a cell mutation and the cell mutation then causes other cells around it to divide and make the cancer get worse. So what we're looking at is preventing the UV radiation from even attacking and breaking down that DNA in your body. People are also at higher risk for skin cancer if they have a fair skin type with light colored skin, freckles, and light hair. Other risk factors in terms of melanoma are if you have a lot of moles. So if you have more than 20 moles on any one extremity, that's considered to be an elevated risk. If you have a family history of melanoma, that increases your risk a little bit as well. About 10% of people that have a melanoma do have a family history of melanoma. Obviously, if you've had a melanoma in the past, you're at a higher risk of having a second one. And if you're immunosuppressed in any way, your body isn't as prepared to look for uh, skin cancers and fight them off early. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about skin cancer prevention. So the, one of the most important things is limiting your UV exposure. So that includes wearing a hat, ideally a wide brim hat, so it also covers your ears. Sunglasses are important to protect your eyes, but also the kind of delicate skin around your eyes. Um, and then sunscreen is very important, and we'll get into a lot of details about that as well. Speaking of the UV index, it's really easy to find this um, both on the weather app or other sources. There's also an app that you can use on your iPhone um, that tells you the UV index for your location at any given time. Um, and if the UV index is three or higher, ideally you should be wearing sunscreen and some sort of sun protective clothing. Another good indication is they call it the shadow rule. When you're outside and your shadow is shorter than what you are, 
It gives you an indication of where the sun is at in the sky. If your shadow is shorter than what you are tall, then that'll give you an indication that the sun is at its peak and it's gonna cause the most damage to you and your skin. It's important to apply suntan lotion 20 to 30 minutes per prior to going outside. Applying the suntan lotion will give you time to soak in and become useful before going out. When the UV index is 10 or greater, you can sustain damage to your skin from exposure in 10 to 15 minutes. And finally, avoiding tanning bed use is very important. We have a lot of data that shows that tanning beds do cause skin cancer and they don't offer much protection in terms of your baseline tan. They only offer an SPF of about 1.5. The most important thing about your sunscreen is the SPF or the sun protection factor. And we want that number to be at least 30 or higher. Um, it doesn't typically matter what the brand is or necessarily the formulation, but that number is very important. You do get a little bit of added protection by going to a higher number, but it's not terribly dramatic. So whatever you're willing to wear and reapply, that is what you should go with. Another place that we go wrong with sunscreen is that most of us don't put on enough of it. Um, an average adult should use uh, one ounce of sunscreen with each application, which is the amount in a full shot glass. So it's quite a bit and your sunscreen tube only carries about three to eight ounces. So you should go through your sunscreen pretty quickly. And then ideally reapply every two hours or sooner if you've been swimming or sweating. Sunscreen is not waterproof, um, but some of them are labeled as at water resistant or very water resistant. And those would last 40 to 80 minutes. There are two different types of ingredients for sunscreens. So there's physical blockers and chemical blockers. Physical blockers reflect the sun's rays off of your skin so that it's not absorbed into your skin to cause damage. And these are the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide ingredients. Classically, those are the more white and pasty ones, but they don't have to be. They make them into smaller particles now so they can rub in easier. And these are especially good for patients who have sensitive skin or small children because they don't tend to burn or be irritating and they're not absorbed into your system. So we consider them to be very safe. Chemical blockers are materials that absorb the UV rays and transmit that energy into a lower, longer wavelength so that it doesn't do damage to your skin. And um, there's a list of those provided. It's important when you're looking at ingredients on the label that the, if you want only physical blockers, those should be the only active ingredients. A lot of times uh, sunscreens will have both physical and chemical blockers. Um, and so it's important to read the labels. Even if they're labeled as a baby or a child sunscreen, they're not always solely a physical blocker. In terms of brands of sunscreen, whatever you are willing to wear is the best for you. I don't have a personal favorite necessarily. Um, we use a variety in my house of both physical and chemical blockers. I do like the Blue Lizard brand. Um, they have a bottle that turns blue when it, the UV index is high and you need sunscreen, so the kids kind of like that. Um, but I also like Aveeno or CeraVe um, and Neutrogena. There's just a lot of good brands out there. I do also recommend for patients to wear a daily sunscreen on the face with at least an SPF of 30, just because we get those UVA rays year round. Um, and they have shown that if you wear a sunscreen with 50 on the face year round, it helps to prevent the signs of aging. I've had other patients ask about sunscreen for children and infants. The American Academy of Pediatrics predominantly recommends um, seeking shade and keeping the skin covered for infants less than six months. Um, but if you do need a little bit of sunscreen, um, that is fine. And I would use a physical blocker with a zinc oxide or the titanium dioxide, um, but try to keep them in the shade with hats and, and keeping their skin covered. I'm also a big proponent of sun protective clothing. And this is rated by what's called the UV protection factor or UPF. And most of them are 50 or higher and they're becoming very popular. So the rash guards and sun shirts and things like that, you can find them at Target, Shields, and there's a variety of online uh, sources as well. They're just really easy for the kids um, and help to protect them from the sun so you don't have to worry about reapplying and worry about getting the sunscreen everywhere. So here in Alexandria, we have lots of outdoor recreation activities. A lot of these would include boating, rafting, kayaking, canoeing. Activities that place you on the water put you at an increased risk for UV exposure and glare. It's also important to protect your eyes. So trying to find UV blocking sunglasses, preferably polarized that cut the glare from the sun will help protect your eyes as well. All right, and finally, we're moving on to skin cancer detection and prevention. So it's important to know your skin and kind of keep an eye on your moles and your freckles. 
your brain is actually very good at pattern recognition and recognizing what was there and what wasn't there or if something has changed. So if you consciously look at your skin um, with an eye to what's there and what, what is changing, you can usually tell um, if something has changed and if you need to have something evaluated. Mostly what we're looking for is moles and freckles with the regular borders or ones that are changing in size or characteristics. If those tend to get bigger, change sizes, or they have jagged, ragged edges, those would all be concerns of a potential skin cancer. It's an important fact also to remember is that African Americans and those with darker complexion are at a reduced risk for skin cancer. Though they are reduced, they still have a, pro a possibility of getting skin cancer. The most common places that people of darker skin may get skin cancer would be on the palms of their hands, palms of their feet. They might actually get it inside their mouth, inside their nose, their mucous membranes, underneath their fingernails, and on their nail beds. So it's important to look at these areas as well. Additionally, in terms of watching for non-melanoma skin cancers, it's important to watch for something that's tender. If you just touch it and it feels like it's more painful than you would expect, a wound that just doesn't want to seem to heal for months, um, or anything that bleeds really easily, like if you wipe your face and you know a spot starts bleeding with the towel. Um, those are all signs that should get you into your doctor's office. So with, with the things we said today, uh, uh, the key factor to take from this is we, we need to go out and we need to enjoy our summer. We need to be able to go outside and have a good time in the sun. But we all need to take the steps, the few little steps here and there to help prevent skin cancer and help prevent its development. Wearing a long shirt when you can, wearing sunblock, staying out of the, the direct sunlight in those times when you can, wearing UV protection sunglasses. A lot of these things we can do will help protect us in the long run, have us not be sunburned at night when we're trying to go to bed and make us feel better in the long run. Thank you.